Hi everybody, for you Zakadian here again today. <clears throat> Excuse me. A lot of people have been making the um, wrap up videos for the year and all the wonderful finds that they've had throughout 2017, because we're in 18 now. And I haven't been able to upload videos lately because I've been way too busy, it's been way too cold and I haven't been able to get out. So I figured that I would just totally go with it and do the same thing as everybody else is doing and show you some of my favorite finds. I've got some metal detecting finds. I've got one of them that is actually a magnet fishing find. And the other ones are coins that either I uh, dug up but these are pretty much all coins that I ended up going through and finding a whole bunch $13 worth from my sister that I bought and uh, they're not like super expensive coins or anything but they're really interesting coins and I like them a lot so without further ado let's go on and uh, do this uh, whole presentation thing plus there's gonna be a shout out real soon for this amazing channel it's called the Quinn's coins and uh, that should probably be up right here or no wait I think it's gonna be up here I can't remember. Regardless, Quinn's Coins, awesome! And I'll tell you why as I get further into it. Okay, hang on, let's go. All right, so when I started metal detecting, I only had a cheap yard sale find, one is like $30 or something ridiculous. And it didn't work that well, but I was able to go out and look a bit. And this is what I had found the very first time I was out. Uh, with that detector and it's a tube of toothpaste now I cannot remember it was a palm olive uh, brand or company whatever and I did google it and I can't remember exactly but I think it was I think it's about 40 years old or so it's like in the late 70s maybe and they stopped making them so this was a really really neat one because I'm really impressed with how much I can still see the writing on this uh, toothpaste and the barcode and everything so that was pretty neat um so then my second favorite find is actually my very first find with my new detector i was at a uh, place where there's a lot of weddings that are being held and i used to go with i was a kid called le Rochelier, and uh, i went under a tree and detected around there because i remember when i was doing my information gathering for my metal detecting and where i could go to get her done Somebody in the videos had said go where people would have leaned up against, sat down at for shade. So under a big tree. That's what I did. And I got this amazing Zippo lighter. So it is, um, it's old. It's old. Uh, but it's not very valuable. It's not super rare. But I, I know it's old. And uh, it still opens. I wish it would stay closed, but it doesn't. So anyway, really super excited with this. Because, uh, you know, back in the day, whoever was using this, man, they were top-of-the-line stuff. I mean, it's a metal Zippo lighter from Niagara Falls, Ontario. This is actually the only thing that I have ever found on the beach, metal detecting. Uh, other than parts of lobster pots, because they're made out of wire. So yeah, uh, the reason I find this is awesome. Is because it's a barrette and I have nothing to compare it to because I haven't found anything else on the beach. So hopefully this year will be my year to find some type of treasure on the beach. This is from when I went metal detecting one day during lunch. Sorry I'm moving so much I almost fell over. This is from when I went metal detecting one day during lunch and uh, I found two of these actually. They were the set and uh, bell keys. I didn't know what they were for but like bell I was thinking the phone company. Yeah, no, it was a bike lock. So anyway, still cool. I like it. I have both of them. I just know where I put the other one. This is from Magnet Fishing. So that was fun too because I drink Pepsi, totally addicted to the Diet Pepsi. And uh, so when I found this, I thought, oh my gosh, it's salvageable. I'm going to keep it. I didn't un like kink it too much because I, I don't know, just I'm afraid to damage it, I guess. So yeah, pretty excited about that one. That was cool. These are a couple of dimes that I found metal detecting in a field. One is 81 and one is 82, so they're not that young. These are spent bullet casings. Obviously, there's no... <laughs> anyway, found these around my dad's camp, which was really neat. 
because uh, nobody really goes back there as much as they used to, so they're pretty old. So now on to my favorite, favorite finds of all. And this is where Quinn's Coins comes in, which I was mentioning earlier that he is amazing. So I've got a 1943 Canadian Penny, and uh, this one is in really good condition, I find, anyway. Nice relief on there. 1952. Some of these I have duplicates of, but they are the oldest that I have so far. So really nice relief on that one as well. 53. What was that? There we go. 1953. Okay. So, so this is my 1953. This is a bit dirtier. I do believe I found this one metal detecting at some point. So yeah, nice relief on there too. We're getting to the best ones. My 1957. See these, I mean, obviously they were in circulation, but they weren't abused. This one, 1959. Which this one is 19, 1960. Nice. This is 1961. So we're good with that. This one, oops, the thing was upside down. Oh, no, that's one of my favorite ones. I can't show you that one right now. Uh, 62. Oh, there, she, there she goes. 63. And my favorite, favorite, favorite coins. Now, this is where Ryan Quinn comes in from Quinn's Coins in his channel. He has uh, over 10,000 subscribers, I believe, but... He is a young man who is in university. He knows what he's talking about. Uh, of course, he's in the U.S., but he still knows all about the mint and the Canadian mint and coins. So he is a wealth of information. And when I found this Wheaty, I wasn't sure who to contact. So I actually inboxed uh, through his Facebook page, uh, Quinn, or I'm sorry, Ryan, and uh, from Quinn's Coins. Immediately, he answered me. Yeah, that's a cool 1920. And the best part is that it's an offset die. So as you can see, it's offset. I know the pen marks are a little bit extreme, but it is offset. So I was pretty excited for that. I don't think it's worth a whole lot of money, but it is worth a lot to me because I love it. And my favorite, favorite, favorite find. Now, Quinn, uh, I keep calling him Quinn, but I think it's okay. I think he calls himself Quinn too. So basically this coin here, to get a good shot of it here 1928 okay 1928 and look at the back it's a blank there is no back side to it you can see the rings of the of the die and uh, if it wasn't for him, he says he thinks it might have been a trick coin because they used to have trick coins way back when. I googled it. Can't find it anywhere that there's a 1928 trick coin. Doesn't mean they don't exist. Just means that I wasn't able to find it. So because of this, um, to thank uh, Ryan, uh, and, and actually his brother Kevin is on his channel too, and they're really, really sweet together. I enjoy watching them. Uh, so anyway, I figured that as a thank you to Ryan for helping me when I wasn't sure what I was looking at is uh, it's a Canadian quarter and I don't think he has one of these or is he hasn't shown it and it's got it was for uh, Remembrance Day and they have the poppies on it. So this was for the 2010 celebration 1945 when the war ended and uh, 2010 was when they commemorate, commemorated it and uh, there you go. So I'm going to try and get uh, Ryan's mailing address and I'll try to send this off to him because I don't think he's got one. It's a really good coin and I'm hoping he can add it to his collection. So uh, thank you very much for all of the support that you guys have given me over the past few months. And uh, I hope that I can 
go and film some more stuff real soon because I'm getting antsy. I really want to get out there. So please like and subscribe if you like what you see. And uh, leave a comment. You don't have to subscribe to leave a comment, but uh, it would be appreciated, of course, as always. And uh, I just want to say thanks very much. Stay, I say stay happy, stay healthy, and stay curious. Sorry, I'm moving around so much. So this is like a bonus kind of a find here. It is a 2000 and... Try to get it so you can see it right. 2010 Canadian Tire coin. Now Canadian Tire is a huge Canadian chain and we've got one in Yarmouth and these tokens or coins had been, they're one dollar coins because they used to have paper money, now they've got points, but uh, it was a one dollar coin, I think it was 50 million maybe made and distributed, but we don't know if people kept them or not, so I don't know if it's rare or not, but I do know it's a big coin and it's a dollar and I like it. Last but not least, this one is uh, Republic, Republica Orientale del Uruguay. What I like about this one is if you turn it over, it is also offset and it's 1994. So it's dos pesos. So I don't know if this is a common error in their coins. Maybe they're not as fussy as the American and Canadian mint. I don't know. Either way, loving it, loving all the coins, and I want to once again thank Ryan Quinn uh, from Quinn's Coins on YouTube. I will put his information at the top of the screen and in the bottom description. Uh, he is a wealth of information, very nice young man, and uh, I really want to support him just like he helped me out and he's supporting me. So thanks very much. Have a great day. And I sh hopefully will see you again very, very soon. Okay, bye-bye.